not many, right? Uh, because that is not called dream. That is your nightmare. <laughs> That's why you cannot remember. If it is a good dream, you want to remember, right? Yesterday I dreamt, you know, I was I was living in a big castle. So I remember until today. <laughs> but uh, of course, there is the castle in the air. Yeah? So embracing vision and mission of the church and walking in the biblical pathway, very important. Yeah? Yeah. So all of us celebrate New Year, right? We celebrate. We celebrate Christmas. We celebrate. What else we celebrate? Easter. What else? What else we celebrate? The coming one is uh, Chinese New Year. Yeah? And then? Anniversary, yeah, this morning we also only know, yeah, anniversary of Bessel and, uh, and uh, Maggie, uh, their wedding anniversary is on a very conspicuous day that everybody can remember. You know what day? We call it the day of reformation when their lives are reformed. <laughs> yeah, uh, from bachelorhood become uh, being mustered. <laughs> yeah, so, so we, we remember, we remember birthdays also, right? How many of you celebrate birthdays? Oh, when is your birthday? Yeah, let me know. Yeah? We can celebrate together over here, right? Mm. Yeah, maybe, you know, we should start celebrating birthdays every month, right? Whose birthday on January? January? Wow! Birthday! Uh, our brother Gun, let's sing happy birthday to him now. Is it okay? Okay, one, two, three, come. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Brother Gun. Happy birthday to you. Wow. Make your wish, huh? Don't need to tell us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So we celebrate birthday, we celebrate anniversaries. And now uh, all this bring us a lot of good and good memories, right? Uh, we are not only just celebrate um, the years past that God has blessed, but we also celebrate the forward journey, right? That uh, we look forward to what God is giving to us um, uh, from here now and forward. Don't know how many years, right? Uh, the other day, I was just counting my days, you know. Uh, because God asked us to count our days. Have you ever count your days? How many days left behind? <laughs> yeah, you know. So I said, you know, my father passed away at 75. My mother passed away at 85. So let's take average 80 years old, yeah? And uh, now I'm 66 years old. I left how many years? <laughs> uh, count by, t- multiply by 365. Actually left only 5,000 over days. So I better make use of the 5,000 over days. <laughs> Yeah. So there is sometimes we use the time that we have to chart our journey, right? So and God actually chart our journey also. So we want to see that this is what the Lord says uh, in the book of Jeremiah. Very interesting words. He said, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads. Stand at the crossroad. And what do you do? Look. Look ahead. Yeah, look ahead. And then ask. Ask. For the ancient path. Uh, ask for the ancient path. Ask where the, what way? Good way. Where the good way is. Ask where the good way is. And then, what else? What you, walk, what you do? Walk in it. And you will find rest for your soul. Yeah, and you will find rest for. He said, look. First of all, he said, stand at the crossroad. So in our, in our lives, there are actually many crossroads that, that demands your decisions. Decisions, 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 right? Every day you make certain decisions, right? Yeah, you know, Mark has to make a decision. Max has to make a decision, right? Uh, I also have to make a decision. Everybody makes decisions almost every day. There is always calling for decisions. But there are even there are some decisions that that challenge our lives. Uh, like this time, you know, Japan has an earthquake. And then after that, in Hiroshima, a lot of people in the Ishikawa side, in Ishikawa side, a lot of people have to make a decision. Yeah, to stay down in that in that what we call the <laughs> the 
earthquake zone, yeah? or to move away from there, right? Or to how to rebuild your family after the quake. So that is also a big decision that they have to make. And when we also have our decision. So he said, stand at the crossroad and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask for the ancient paths. What is the ancient paths? What is the ancient paths that we have? Ancient paths is like tradition, you know. Ancient paths is the paths that people have walked before. And what is that path that we want to walk in it? The ancient path that is good. He said, the ancient path that is good. Ask where the good way is. So there are many paths in our lives, right? We can walk ours. We can walk Jesus' way. We can also walk many other ways. And he said, ask which way is good. And then walk in it. Walk in it. So this is what the Lord wants to tell us this year, beginning of the year. Which way is good? What do you want to see? What do you want to achieve? What kind of life you want to live? Walk in it. He said, walk in that path, walk in that direction, right? And then you will find rest for your soul. Isn't it important? You know, a lot of uncertainties, wars and rumors of wars. Yeah, beginning of the, uh, of the year, first day of the year, earthquake. And, uh, and uh, it, 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 of course, we say that it's Japan, you know. Some even more wicked say, that is the retribution. They deserve it. Oh, goodness. How can we say like that, you know? Yeah. Then, um, then you know, you, 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 do you know not just about two days ago, China has an earthquake. Do you know or not? Don't know, huh? too far away, is it? Because Malaysia don't have, Malaysia haven't even shaken, huh? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So China has an earthquake, 4.2 magnitude. And then we don't know what will happen next, yeah. Uh, but then Malaysia got another thing. Today we got, this morning we have heavy downpour, right? Yeah, so some places the water rise beyond their, beyond their comfort zone, get it or not? Uh, of course, you all stay in a high place, we don't know. But there are many places which are low-lying, and the water can rise above their comfort zone. Right? So there are so many things. All these things cause our heart to worry and worry. And he said, find the ancient path. Find that way and walk in it, and you'll find rest for your soul. Right? So this morning, we are going to uh, look at this uh, very important thing. Find rest. Right? Yeah. So, we want to explore how to shape our mission and vision according to the biblical principles, right? And that based on God's calling, based on God's commands, based on what He says, not just what we believe we want to be, but based on what God wants to say, based on what God has promised us. You know, every time when God commands us to do something, he always gives us a promise. Right. You will do this, you will get that. You do this, your life will be like that. He always has a certain way of telling us. And not only that, if we walk in it, he said, you will receive that promise. And with that promise, he also gives you the provisions. The provisions of time, the provisions of resources, and the provisions of your Good, uh, his um, his um, blessings and protection upon you, right? And that based a lot on what he is and who he is. And so this year we want to know God and encounter Jesus, because we want to know what he has done, what he has what he has assigned, what he has built out, the big picture of our lives. Not only just our individual lives as a person, but a group, a community. God is not always thinking about a person. He called a person, very true. <coughs> he called a person to do something very specific. But he called, sometimes he called one person to do something very specific for the whole community. It's not just for the one person. Amen? 
So imagine God call you, God call you, but not for you alone, for you to live a life of yours alone, but for the community, for the good of the community. Amen. Yeah. So let us look at it this way. Yeah. So let us look at it this way that God want to capture our hearts this year for the community. You know this today as I come to the church, <laughs> as I come as I drive, one word come to my mind, and it it stay you no know, there until now. The word is capture, <laughs> capture. <laughs> yeah. So God want to capture you no know, our hearts, want to capture our minds. Want to capture our thoughts, uh, captivate it for what? For him, for himself, yeah. To live a life for himself. Tell the person next to you, God want to capture you, <laughs> capture your hearts, right? Uh, very, very tough. Huh? <laughs> All of us don't like that word, right? Yeah, we like release. No, we don't like capture. Yeah, but God truly, He want us, He want our heart for Himself, right? Yeah. So the first person we want to look at is look at Noah. Yeah. We want to look at Noah. How God come to Noah? God come to Noah when everybody move away from him. Right? Everybody corrupted, he says in the Bible. And everybody are so wicked that God regretted even make human being. God regretted. But even this time, God saw one man. God saw who? Ah, Noah. Noah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God didn't saw Noah. Uh, uh, no, uh, no. But Noah, yeah. God saw Noah. And then God called him to do some specific task. What task God asked him to do? Build an ark in the middle of desert. <laughs> not jungle, uh, not Malaysia. You know? In Malaysia, we say, oh, yeah, logical, no? Because heavy rain, yeah? We must build the boat. But it is in the middle of a wilderness, in the middle of a desert, like a desert. Yeah. In a desert, people don't see rain like Malaysia, right? You don't see flood like that. Correct or not? And there's always dry. People like water. Yeah. But then there's not much water around. And God asked him to build an ark and give him the give him the dimensions. Give him even how to build it and what to use to build it. You just imagine how, how specific God's uh, instruction given to Noah. Now, Noah, if you are Noah, what will you do? If you are Noah, God asks you to build an ark in the middle of the desert, what will you do? Uh, yeah. yeah, the first person is Joseph. Shake his head. God, you made a mistake, <laughs> right? Made a mistake. How can it be? How can that be? I have never seen even a small river. How can it be that you are talking about a flood, right? What else? What else do you think Noah would think? Huh? How can I build it by myself? Right. How can I build it by myself? Now, if I were to build an ark during that time, what would other people say? Crazy. <laughs> yeah. You must be crazy. What else? Wow, you... I think you heard the wrong thing. Yeah, you heard the wrong thing. God asked you to build a house, not build an ark. <laughs> yeah, you know? So many things can happen, right? Yet, Noah did it. So he did it. The Bible said, so he did it. He go and built. And means all the, all the people talking. People come to see Noah. You know, initially, it's just pieces of woods everywhere, yeah? When you see pieces of woods everywhere, you don't know what he's building, right? <laughs> but eventually, he start taking shape, you know. Yeah, yeah. You he start taking shape like a boat. Uh, uh, th then everybody will think, what, what is this? You know, what are you doing? Yeah. But he did it amidst all the, all the people talking, all the, all the uh, people laughing at him. He did it, and Noah did all that. The Lord commanded him. Did all that the Lord commanded him. Yeah. Just imagine he was how old? 600 years old. Wow. During that time, people are living very old. Yeah. yeah today, 60 years old, so we cannot be already. Yeah. 
So when the flood waters came on earth, and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark and escaped the waters of the flood. So only the family. What happened to the rest of the people? When, the, when Noah, I believe uh, during the period of building of the boat, of the ark, how many years he built the ark? How many years he take to build the ark? Remember? How many? Hundred and? Many years, you know. He didn't build it in one day. Uh. <laughs> yeah, he built it in how many years? Hundred over years, right? Hundred and twenty years to build there. I think every day a lot of people pass by and ask him, what are you doing? He said, build, 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 build an ark. And then after that, people ask him, you must be crazy. He said, hey, please, remember, this is what God tell you. We are going to have flood. Huh? Please do come huh? and, I, and come into my boat. Come into my ark and you will be safe, right? And what the people will do? Uh, I, I should I get some of you to act. Huh? <laughs> what will people do? The people are, <laughs> yeah. Crazy fellow. Yeah. But it happened, right? So after that, flood really come. But one important thing that we want to see, one important thing that we see is God asked, God said to Noah, So make yourself an ark. Give him the dimension, give him the how he do it. And Noah did it. Noah obeyed the commands. Noah obeyed the command. And miss all the unreason, unreasonableness that come to his mind. Right? So the first principle that we want to see about vision and mission that the God gave us to us is first principle, come let us read together. Yeah? Obedience to God's calling and command. Even if you don't understand even if you don't understand. Now, sometimes God did ask us to do something that is very strange, right? But God wants us to obey. Obey Him. Obey His command. Obey His calling. And do it. Even if you don't understand. Even if you don't know whether this is a reasonable path to go or not. You know, sometimes... Our, our human being as well as our human mind are what we call a logical mind. We have a logical mind. And our logical mind is set up with a logical as well as human values. You know, we have our own values. We have our own team. We have our own aim or goal or objective in life that we want to reach. But what if God asks you to do something different? Will you do or not? Say, for example, if God asks some of you to, to take out a mission, to do a mission elsewhere, or if you are in the heart of your career, and God said, I single you out to become a mission, no? to take out a mission into some other places that forever you don't like that place. For example, China. <laughs> yeah. Will you say, okay, God, I'm willing. I'm willing. Will you do? Yeah. You know? It's difficult to say, right? But then, let us think carefully. If God were to impress upon your life, were to call you, if you don't obey, I tell you, you will forever have nightmare. If you obey, you will have rest for your soul. You know? All right? First principle, obedience to God's calling and command, even if you don't understand. Let's look at the second person. The second person is the calling of Abraham. Now, how God called Abraham? Again, very amazing. You know, during that time after Noah's people began to flourish, the, uh, the population grow everywhere, and then, and then what happened? Everybody want to Stay together. Let's stay together in GIC. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. Cozy, comfortable. All of us have coffee and uh, donuts. You know, very nice, right? Got or not? Nice or not? You know, stay here. Outside raining, here is warm and nice, right? Dry some more. Yeah. Very nice. So everybody wants to get together. So during that time, 
every man get together and we speak the same language. No, what language you all speak? English, right? Every one of us understand English over here, right? So we speak only one language. Nice, right? Yeah, so only one language. <laughs> Anybody speak different language here? Oh, yeah, we got Hana speak China, the Chinese language. Ah, we also have Japan, <laughs> yeah, uh, Japanese language. What else? Uh, uh, Philippine, oh, yeah. But we understand English, right? Yeah, so we can speak one language, we all can gather together very easily. So people gather together in one language, in one mind, and in one heart. And so what they build? They build the Tower of Babel, right? They build the Tower of Babel together. And in the Tower of Babel, as they build, you know, men are very funny, right? Men, men have a heart that is very funny. Uh, tell yourself, my heart is not very, <laughs> sometimes very funny, <laughs> my heart. Yeah? We, as we build, as we build, we begin to, to collaborate more and more. And then we say, wow, let us build a tower bigger, taller, higher, so that it can reach out to heaven. Yeah, so that we build a name for our own self. Yeah, that is in Genesis chapter what? 11, ah. two men together. Ma. 11 ah. means two men together, you know. Yeah, Genesis chapter 11, right? So the men get together, build a tower called Tower of Babel so that they are able to stay together. And they want to build for them a name that is bigger than anybody. And God said, no man, this is no good. Yeah, so God came and, and what? Confused them. Suddenly, they speak Filipino, they speak Egyptian, <laughs> they, they speak Japanese, they speak Chinese. They speak all kind of Indian language and so on. Nobody can understand each other, Nigeria and so on. Yeah? So everybody spread all over the place. But during that time, after everybody spread, God called a specific person to himself to build a, person, a nation after his own heart, after God's own design and his ways. And he called Abraham. And when when Abraham was called, that group or the nations of people actually don't worship Jehovah. What, who they worship? This nation, who they worship? Do you know? They worship, the, they worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. Right? And then, after they are called, after Abraham called, God said, you come and we will make you a nation. And so, the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will, come, let us read. Nah? I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and those who curse you, I will curse. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. Wow, so many, you know. God said to Abraham, what did he say to Abraham? I will make you. I will make you twice. No? And then after that, I will bless you. Yeah. But those that curse you, I will curse. Wow. Serious words. No? And, and Abraham got it. Abraham got it. Got the message. The message is calling me. Calling me to do what? I don't know. To become a people. A people. A people called by God. I will show you the land where I will show you. Not this land, right? Not inherited from Haran. No. It is another. So God gave him a completely different style and different way. A completely a different way of life. Completely different countries, different place, a different culture from where he come from. Now, some of you may have come from different cultures and come and alight in Malaysia. Yeah, you are most welcome, yeah? Yeah, as a Malaysian, we welcome you. <laughs> yeah, as a Johorian, we welcome you to Johor. Yeah, but you see, this type of welcome is very different from Abraham. Abraham, when he called, he called to a place where he even don't know where is it. You get what I mean? You know Abraham traveled from where? 
traveled from Ur to Palestine, yeah, cross the Fertile Crescent, that is the Tigris and the Euphrates River, yeah, into, um, into the land on the west. And that is a distance of how many miles? You know how many miles? 1,200 miles? Yeah. And they must be traveling many, many. And then, and then the only person that guide them as well as the direction to the land is God. He doesn't know. He might have traveled to China, you know, go to the east and go to China, yeah? And then landed in China, landed in, uh, landed in Wuhan, <laughs> yeah, you know? And then, and then found out, wow, this is really a nice place, you know? Yeah, everything grow there. Or landed in Malaysia, you know? Uh, you throw a seed, it will grow. But God actually take him to the other place where, you, where there's no water, <laughs> yeah? Wilderness, you know? After he go there, there only he realized nothing grow there. <laughs> Yeah, in the wilderness, right? And he, not only that, he faced uh, even a famine. And then because of the famine, he has to move further, further west to, to Nar, to Egypt, right? He went to Egypt. And then in Egypt, wow, nice man. Yeah, probably that is the place. Huh? Yeah, but God said, no, that's not the place. Yeah, you have moved to the wrong place. I will make you into a great nation. I will make your name great. I will bless you. That is the promise given by a person, by God, given to Abraham, if Abraham were to follow that call. And so Abraham went. So Abraham went. The word so, very important. So Abraham went. So the important thing about us is, if God call you, so what's your way to? <laughs> the word so. Hmm, huh? If God were to call us, so what shall you do? Mm, huh? <laughs> obey, yeah. So obey. God called, yeah. So the Lord called. Abraham went, and he was seventy-five years old. Just imagine, all those people are very old when they are called, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Today, if they if God call me seventy-five years old, I say you must make you 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 should call Max lah. You know, yeah. I'm too old for that already, yeah. So principle number two, God calling comes from his own vision. God's calling does not come from our vision. Men have many visions. We have many wants. <coughs> we have many objectives. Even when we come to the church and we want to say, okay, a few of us come together to build a church. We also have our own mission and vision, right? But God did not want us to build on our own vision and mission. God asked us to align our vision and mission according to where He wants us to be. His way, not our way. His will, not our will. Right? Come, come, let us read together. Calling comes from God's vision, aligning with His purpose. Those who obey will be blessed. Those who obey are blessed. Tell the person next to you, you'll be blessed if you obey. <laughs> you'll be blessed if you obey. You see, God never make mistake. If He said that you will be blessed if you obey, surely you will be blessed if you obey. Right. Uh, that's why we want to read the book of Daniel. It's very interesting. The book of Daniel is very interesting. You just imagine the whole gang of people in Israel, they are actually go rebel against God. And after rebel against God, and, um, and uh, the whole nation turned apostate. Because the whole nation forsaking God. And because of that, God allowed Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Babylonian, to take them into exile. First, the Assyrian exile. Second, is the Babylonian exile. So two exiles taking place during that time. First, the northern uh, kingdom. Second, the southern kingdom, the Judah and uh, the Judah. So after that, but all these are being foretold by a prophet called Jeremiah. And when Jeremiah foretold this, Jeremiah told them, you not only just go, you live there, you buy land there, you start cultivating there, start bearing children there, start building up your family there. God will bless you when you are in that foreign land, if you obey me. Of course, a lot of Israelites say, how can that be? I don't want to do that. You know, there's one song, uh, in Psalms, sing like that, you know. 
in the foreign land by the river of Babylon. Uh, you all know that song, right? By the river of Babylon, uh, where I sat down, hey, hey, I wept. Uh, when, when, I when I remember Zion. And then after they said, the strange people asked me to sing a song. How can I sing the Lord's song yeah. in that strange land? Yeah. So there is a song. There is the heart of the people of the Jews in the exiled land. But Jeremiah says what? Go, live there, cultivate there, build your family there. And I will bring you back one day, 70 years later. God says, and so, coming back to this, right? Again, the visions of calling of God is not about how we conjure up. It's about what God called us aligning to His own will, His vision, not our vision, right? So those who obey will be blessed. Those who obey will be blessed. Second prayer. So third, <laughs> so we talk about Jeremiah. So now we talk about Jeremiah. So Jeremiah, the prophet being called, when he was called, when he was called, yeah, he said, what? Before, God said to him, before I form you in a womb, I know you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. So God called Jeremiah to be the prophet. Very simple. You be my mouthpiece. You become my mouthpiece, right? Now, speak my word to those people, irrespective of whether they want to listen or not. You just speak. Yeah. And what he says, before you are formed in your womb, I already know you. God knows us. God knows us personally. And God knows us where we will become. God also knows us from the time when we are birthed, not only just He knows us, He already called us. He already called us. He knows. He knows that one day you'll be like that. <laughs> because He is the one who orchestrates our whole life. He is the one who orchestrates the whole of our life. You know, as I look back, I never imagined I was standing here. I never imagined that I would become pastor. In fact, 20... When I was 20, 20, when I was 20 years old, yeah, when I was 20 years old, yeah, 20, I remember 20 years old, yeah. When I was 20 years old, there's a group of people always come and share Jesus Christ with me. Always. And, and because, maybe because I was, uh, I was a bit pleasant and, you know, uh, always smiling. <laughs> so they keep thinking that I'm a very good prayer, you know. Uh, 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 so they pray on me, you know. So they, they make me uh, to listen to them, to share gospel. But uh, I was very fierce too. Uh, so I, I debate with them. I uh, uh, got one person. Uh, I debate with him for about four nights from 10 o'clock right up to almost 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. After the whole debate for four, five days, he come and tell me, he said, he called my name, uh, Hong Boon. He said, Hong Boon. You can never become a Christian. You can never become a Christian. That is what he says. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Few days, few years later, he saw me in the church. He was completely surprised. <laughs> yeah. He said, Oh, how come? Uh, how can that be? You know? Yeah. And and you see, I also never think about I keep thinking that I'm a Buddhist. I keep thinking that I'm the one that uh, counsel Christian to become a Buddhist. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I did. That's what I did when I was a Buddhist. I tell you frankly, and that's what I did. And many, actually many people from being a Christian go back to become a Buddhist because of my counsel. Well, but uh, when I became Christian, I tried to counsel them back. <laughs> yeah. And I failed. <laughs> I couldn't do it. And I regretted, you know. Yeah. And maybe because of that, uh, I decided, you know, I must learn more so that I can tell the gospel better, you know, yeah. So, so just imagine our lives. God is already known us and orchestrated, not so much of what we do, right? So same as Jeremiah. 
And so he said, you know, uh, Jeremiah says in, in this verse, he said, Ah, oh, sovereign God, Lord, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. I'm too young. How many of you think that you're too young? Hmm. Yeah, next. <laughs> yeah, who else? Yeah, too young. Sorry. <laughs> ah, yeah, Mark. <laughs> yeah, not just 75 years old. Yeah, mm, yeah too young. You know? But the Lord says what? Do not say, I'm too young. Okay, now I want you all to read uh, for those who think that you are too young. All right? Um, Mark, you are not too old, too. Yeah? Okay, come, let us read together. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Wow. God say, you're not too young. No? Tell the person next to you, you're not too young to start. Yeah? Not too young. Not too young. Yeah. Huh? yeah. You must go. You must go where I stand you and say whatever I command you. Well, this is dangerous, right? Yeah. Because what God said to you to tell the person next to you may not be what the person wanted to hear or may make, may make him very angry too, right? And Jeremiah says a lot of words that make the person that he said to very angry with him. And so during the whole reign of uh, Jeremiah as a prophet, nobody actually listened to him except one person. And the person is Baruch. Yeah? And during that time, there's one king and the king, after listening to Jeremiah, what did he do? He take a piece of knife. Yeah? Whatever Jeremiah said, he cut, 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 throw into fire. Yeah? After that, throw Jeremiah into a dungeon and let him die there. And that is what Jeremiah experienced. But during this whole time of Jeremiah's suffering, what did he say here? The last word. For I am with you, and I will rescue you. So just imagine, all the king that he served died. Actually, you know, they are actually exiled. They actually died. They actually killed. But Jeremiah didn't. Jeremiah survived. Because God says, I will rescue you. I will protect you. Because I am with you. So brothers and sisters, if God calls you to share the gospel, don't worry, just go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. No need to worry too much. Right? Of course, sometimes we have to be intelligent a bit. No, don't simply shout. You know? But then we have to obey. The moment you and you obey, God is with you, He will rescue you. Yeah? He will rescue you. And um, and <coughs> And at one time, Jeremiah is also lose a bit heart. Yeah? He said, oh, yeah, you know, after I talk to so many people, nobody listen. Have you ever talked to people that people don't listen? Yeah, of course, yeah. There are so many people don't listen. Yeah, some people will yawn afterward. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, start already. <laughs> yeah. So if he said, then, but then the Lord said to him, if you have raised with men on foot, and they have worn you out. How can you compete with the horses if you have stumbles in the safe country? How will you manage in the thicker by the Jordan? Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. I like this verse very much. The first time when I, when I read Jeremiah, this is the verse that come to me. You know, uh, I think that must be some, <coughs> some 30 years ago. <coughs> when we do uh, inductive Bible studies on Jeremiah, on the book of Jeremiah. And this was stuck with me. They said, yeah, life is tough. It's never easy. Life as a Christian, God never promised us a bed of roses. It's never easy. And especially when you want to live up your standard as well as your values in this broken and corrupted world. It's even worse, right? In the business especially, if you, are, if you are going to go according to 
the biblical principles. A lot of people will tell you you're crazy, you're mad, right? It cannot work. It doesn't work that way. But that is what God says. So how? Right? He said, if you are walking, running with horses, he said, if you are worn out, even in safe country, even in safe country, even when the time are safe, even at the time of peace, yeah, we also stumble, we also fail, and we also dare not. How are we going to compete with the horses in the tickets of Jordan, in the wild country, when times are bad, when times are full of challenges, how are we going to live our faith then? That actually awakened Jeremiah. And after that, you can see his life completely changed. He followed through. And he, he didn't give up. He followed through. The only thing he did is cry. <laughs> he cried most of the time. That's why he wrote the book called Lamentations. Right? Right? Mistakes, failures, insult, frustration, rejections are all part of part of what? Progress. It will come to you. It's real. True or not? Have you experienced all this? Yeah. If you don't, you are a very special person. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. If you have, you're also very special. Yeah. Because this is what God says. Yeah. Part of progress and part of growth. Part of our growth. Nobody ever achieved anything worthwhile without facing all these five things. Karana. Yeah. If we don't know all these five things, in fact, we are not human at all. We are just an AI. <laughs> Eventually we have AI that don't make all these mistakes. Right? Yeah. Principle number three. Faithfulness. Yeah, long obedience in the same direction. Unwavering belief in the prophecy and steadfast in the calling. So calling does not come from our own manufacturing. Calling comes from a calling from God. A vision and a mission come from a calling from God. And we need to be faithful. We need to be steadfast. Even sometimes we may face difficulties. Amen? Amen. Now, come, let us read together. Faithfulness, a long obedience in the same direction. Unwavering belief in the prophecy and steadfast in the calling. Yeah? All right. So Jesus said this. We come to Jesus and the disciples. Jesus then said to the disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must what? Deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Is it easy? No. It is never easy. It is so easy to, it is so easy to say, God, bless me. Bless me and bless me. We just want to have a, a life that is full of blessings, full of goodness. And today, there are many Gospels that say like that. Then there are many Gospels that preach, talking about asking God, to bless your life, that's all. Actually, it is good to be blessed. And God will definitely want to bless our life, true or not. But God bless, want to bless our life in the pretext of us following Him. Taking out what that He has given to us. Follow His example and follow His ways. Follow His words, right? And follow him. So knowing our purpose, knowing our purpose, what is our purpose of our life? God save us, yes. God love us, yes. God give us even the Holy Spirit that indwells in us, yes. That's all true. But what then? After all this that is given to us, what is our purpose? What is our purpose? Uh, that become a question that we must learn. Huh? So he said. Uh, Timothy 1 9. 2 Timothy 1 9. He said, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, 
which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So God wants all of us to live according to His purpose, His way, His life, His mission, His vision. Amen? All right. So Matthew chapter 28 is, the, is our church vision and the vision and the mission that God has given to all the churches throughout since the year 2000, uh, since the year of beginning. Yeah? The, uh, when Jesus, uh, before Jesus uh, was taken up to heaven. And he says what? Come, let us read. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I will be with you always to the ends of the world. Obey my command. Obey my command. Go and make disciples of all nations. Obey my command. It's a it is very clear and very simple, but it's just not easy to follow. That's all. Yeah? But let us make a point this year to obey His command so that the church as a whole, as well as our life, are being enriched, are being developed, are being grown, are, are, are taken up, you know, that God wants us to go in that direction. Direction of following Him, a direction of growth. Yeah. So principle number four: follow Christ. Follow Christ. Fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the initiator and the perfecter of our faith. Taking our cross and follow Him. Taking out our cross and follow Him. God didn't promise us happiness. But He promised us abundant life. And He promised us abundant life through the way we are going to live His way, not according to our own way. Right? Okay. And so He said to them, It is not for you to know the time or season in which the Father has put in His own authority, but you shall receive power from the Holy Spirit. And so when the disciples, after hearing all this, learning about God giving them the command as well as the way to obey the way He is going to give. And Jesus again tell them, stay in Jerusalem until something happened to you. And that something to happen is that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. And when the Holy Spirit come upon them, they shall become the witness for God. Yeah? And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13, saying that what after the Holy Spirit came to us, endured in us, the church began to take place. People began to gather. And as the people gather into the church of God, coming together, God began to set out a, a functions. Yeah. And the different functions given to different people. And so he says, he said, I gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, some to be teachers. For, for what? To prepare God's people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity of faith. Until we all reach the unity of faith. God's command, God's purpose, God's vision and mission. What is His mission? Go and make disciples of all nations. What is His purpose? so that we all reach the unity of faith. So that we all reach the unity of faith. Built out, being built out uh, together in the knowledge of the Son of God and become, become what? Come, let us read. Uh, become what? Mature, attending to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Wow, that's a tall order, isn't it? God wants us to have the fullness of Christ dwelling in us. Wow. Tell the person next to you. God wants you to have the fullness of Christ in you. Uh, 
Tell, tell the person next to you. Mm. Tell the person next to you. Hey, tell more convincingly. La, no. Ah, yeah, tell like telling jokes like that. Tell them. God wants to have the fullness of Christ in you. Tell them. Tell them one more time. <laughs> not good enough, you uh, Tell them. Dare not tell. Uh. No, I know you, some of you dare not tell. Because my next, my next, one, next sentence I want to tell them is, I am the one who is going to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are the one. We are the one going to do the same work, you know. Yeah, because he said what? He said, I give all of you a function. I give all of you a gift, spiritual gifts. For what? So that all of us can attain the unity of faith together. So that all of us can have the knowledge of Christ. And then all of us can be mature into him into the fullness of Christ that we have. Amen? They're not say. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Not easy. But can we do it? Yes. Tell the person next to you, we can do it. Ah, yeah. We can do it not because we can do it, but because the Holy Spirit in us can do it. Amen? Because God can do it. What we need to do is to obey Him. If we obey him, we can do it. You know, it's so simple. You know? I still remember when I believed in Jesus. When I believed in Jesus Christ, I attended, uh, I attended a, a seminar, the first conference I attended. And the first conference I attended is Easter conference. And the person talked about end times prophecy, eschatology. I also cannot, uh, I also cannot uh, pronounce it properly during that time. You know, what, what is that? And I tell you, I came out of the conference four days, blur. I don't know what he's talking about. The only thing I know what he's talking about is Jesus is coming. <laughs> yeah, that is the only thing that stuck in my mind. You know? Jesus is coming again. And it's true that he will be coming. That's all. But I don't understand the whole Bible. And during that time, somebody tell me, you need to get a good Bible so that you can understand. Oh, I said, what is a good Bible? Uh? So he said, NIV version is the best. <laughs> so I bought an NIV version. It's true, you know, during the conference, I already uh, strangled with my money because I got not much money, uh, but, but even with the little money that I have, I still go and buy a Bible. <laughs> that cost me, I think during that time, was 30 ringgit. Hey, 40 over years ago, 30 ringgit, very big, you know. <laughs> yeah, after 30 ringgit, uh, I have to fast many days. Yeah, so so I, I bought that Bible and I start reading it all, all over. Actually, before I became Christian, I also read. I cannot understand at all yeah, what it says. But somehow or rather, some of the verses are struck me very hard. Yeah. Then I asked the Lord how to understand this whole book. And amazingly, God gave me so many people to help me to understand the book. And at the same time, I understand that the Holy Spirit is the one that is working. And God is good, yeah? So we understand. And true enough, all of us can help each other to understand. That's the reason why we have all the Bible studies made available for all of us. Amen? Even difficult book. We're going to study very difficult book this year. Book of Daniel. Difficult or not? Some of you uh, cannot understand what book of Daniel. Better don't touch, you know, cannot understand. Second, the book of Revelations. Like each other. Uh, no, more difficult, yeah? Mm. So principle number five, come. Indwells by the Holy Spirit, we shall be His witness, working together in unity till we attain the fullness of Christ. Till we attain the fullness of Christ. Amen. So don't worry. Tell the person next to you, don't worry, I help you. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Don't worry. We help each other, okay? We help each other. All right? Yeah. And then there are still so many people who don't come. Tell them to come. We help them too. Huh? Yeah, help them too. All right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Huh? And this is eternal life. That they may know you. They may know the Lord. The only true God. And Him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ. And that's one of the reasons this year we are going to embark on this theme. 
knowing God, encountering Jesus, that our life will be transformed. Yours and others, right? Together. Obedience to God's call and command, first principle. Second principle, God calls us to vision, aligning with His purpose. Third, faithfulness, obedience, and perseverance. Fourth, follow Christ, fix our eyes on Jesus, taking our cross, follow Him. Five, indwelled by the Holy Spirit, be His witness, <coughs> serve in unity, till we attain the fullness of Christ. God is big, right? Is God big? Is God big? Yes. So dream big. Because God is big. <laughs> God is big, dream big. Right? Come. We shall spend some time. Uh, we, we spend five minutes. Lah, yeah? Form a small group of three to four people and ask them what dream you have that is big that we want to share and we want to pray. We want to share we want to pray. We want to commit to the Lord. Right? Together. Come. Form small group. From a small group of three or four, five also can. Yeah? Share with each other and pray for one another. Pray for one another for the beginning of the year. That we want to have the Holy Spirit in us. We want to be endured by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> yeah. Ah, can. Five. Ken, yeah, huh? yes, no. Mm.